Please turn your Bibles to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. I still hear some pages turning. Take your time, Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. We're so glad to have our dear friend Tasha here with us and her friend. She was with us during the Revelation Seminar. Let's put our hands together for her. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 to 31. And we will see what the Lord has to say to us through that text today. And we're going to ask that you to please exercise your limbs and stand. Somebody was waiting for me to ask. <laughs> Isaiah 48, 40, verses 28 to 31. I believe we're there. Yes. The Bible says, Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Verse 29. The Bible says, even the youth shall faint. Don't we'll talk about the old folk and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. Again, the Bible says, but those who wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I just want to entitle this message with your prayers, but most importantly, God's help, entitled simply, strength to keep on going. Strength to keep on going. Look at your neighbor quickly to your left or right and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. God will give you strength. Come on, minister to him to keep on going. Look at him again and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. God will give you strength to keep on going. Bless the name of Jesus. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would have your own way. Move us out of the way. Be uplifted and be God. And we will be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory that's due to your matchless name. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every blood bought believer say amen. 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 You may possess your seats in the name of the Lord. Dr. Warren Risby, in his book entitled The Bumps of What You Climb On, made a very profound statement. He stated the trouble with life is that it is so daily. I know you was gonna look at me, so I know you don't mind if I rewind and press play. I said, Dr. Warren Risby, who wrote the book, The Bumps of What You Climb On, made a very important statement. He said that the trouble with life is that life is so daily. Life is comprised, beloved brothers and sisters, of daily stress, daily bills, daily unpleasant surprises, daily drama. Does anybody have drama in here? Daily confusion, daily heartbreaks, and daily heartaches, daily health problems, and daily family problems. Life is comprised of daily problems. The trouble with life, again, that Dr. Ward Risby states is that it is daily. It's like an energizer, buddy. It keeps on going and it does not stop. Amen. How many of you 
know that you went to bed yesterday dealing with a problem and you woke up this morning with the problem. Life is so daily, beloved brothers and sisters, but I've come to the realization that sometimes as humans we get tired, Lawrence McCants, of the dailiness of life. But I am comforted by what Moses told the tribe of Asher in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. He said, as your days are, so shall your strength be. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. I'm going to say it one more good time because you're looking at me crazy. Moses stated to the tribe of Asher, he said, as your days are, so shall your strength be. In other words, God will never give you the day without giving you the strength to get through the day. Somebody ought to say amen. No matter what day and drama you deal with, no matter what day and bills you deal with, deal with no matter what no matter what daily annoyances you deal with, God will never present you in the day without giving you the strength to get through the day. But furthermore, Moses told them in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27, he said the eternal God is your refuge. And
And so God, God gives him his wrestling. First of all, God says, listen here. He says, I'm the eternal, everlasting God. Huh? You got to give him his resume because in order for you to convince somebody that you can do the job, you got to convince them that you've been there, done that, and you're going to keep on doing it. So he says, I'm the eternal, I'm the eternal, everlasting God, meaning that God is not conformed, conformed to our time. Yes. Oh, Lord, God, I'm going to here. It means that God is not conformed to time. It means that God is working his purpose out in his own way, at his own pace. Without nervous desperation, without hurry, nervous desperation. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. See, when you got power, God ain't up in heaven. Yeah. I'm 
Don't run 
They don't get caught up in turbulence. Huh? If you notice anything about an eagle, an eagle is so bad, and he has so much agility that he'll let the turbulence keep him down. Paul Lawrence McCann's out here to declare that God will give you some eagle power. He'll give you power to fly over the trials. He'll give you power to fly over the discouragement. He'll give you power to fly over depression. He'll give you power to fly over low self-esteem. He'll give you eagle power. Come here, Paul, and help us out. Paul says that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loved us. When you hang out with Jesus, you don't stick with the chickens, but you learn how to fly. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time for takeoff. God will give you strength to fly over it. Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, stop talking about it. Fly over it. Thank <laughs> you. 
God didn't take you by the hand and walk with you. I said the 41 says, fear not, I am with you. Be not confused, sis, for I am thy God. It says, I will help you. Physical weight, 
But we walk around carrying the weight of the world. And you've given up on God. But God says, I have not given up on you. What should be? God says, I can give you strength to keep on going. The greatest glory holiday is not in God removing it. The greatest glory is he giving you strength in the midst of it. Because in the pits of hell, the devil is playing cards. And he's saying, they can't make it. And God said, oh yes, they can. With me. Father, I'm praying for my beloved brothers and sisters here. My church family here. Some are tired of running. Some are tired of walking. Some, Lord God, want to submit to being chickens when you call them to be eagles. You didn't call us, Lord Jesus, to be caught up in the turbulence of this life, the trials of this life. You called us to fly over it. What good is I? is a savior that can't give me overcoming power. But Lord, you can and you will. In the name of Jesus, I pronounce a blessing upon us in here today. Lord God, I pray against the give up spirit, the quit, quitting spirit, the woe is me spirit, Father, I pray that we will set our hope on you and live with the tension promise revealed but not yet fulfilled. And Father, the good news of the gospel, I'm glad that I am a seventh day and finished Christian because Lord, we know about waiting. Because Advent tells us we're waiting for the hope of Jesus coming. It's a promise revealed, but not yet fulfilled, but we know it's going to be fulfilled because you're not a God that lies. Give us strength to keep on going. In the name of Jesus, 